Well, thank you everyone uh, for staying around. I think I'm the last speaker. I'm the last thing between you guys and partying all night long. So I appreciate everyone uh, coming and listening to me talk today. <laughs> so um, what I'll talk to you about today is Internet of Things and machine learning and what we're doing to change how science is done. So just a show of hands, how many people of you, uh, how many people out there have a background in science? Biology, chemistry, physics, something like that. Okay, well, I'm specifically going to be talking about science-based companies. So when I talk about science-based companies, what am I talking about? Companies that work in synthetic biology, material science, agriculture, these kinds of things. Now, the issue is, a lot of you, in, 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 in recent years, there's been uh, a, lot, a lot of difficulty raising money for these kinds of companies because any company that's founded on basic science is viewed as a science experiment. So why would investors invest in these kinds of companies? And it's because nature is complex. When you build a company, you build products based on science, based on materials, co complex molecules, chemistry, and biology, a lot of things can go wrong because nature is very complex. And it comes out because there's always the unknown unknowns. So for those of you who've worked in these industries, you do something, you do it again in the lab, and it doesn't work. And what do you do? You rack your brains trying to figure out what went wrong. Now, let me give you an analogy with writing software. Imagine if you had to write software, but every time you run, you, you, you run your program, your operating system changes. Every time you run a program, your operating system changes. And if you have a situation like that, there's no way that you can get the same result every single time. That is the world of science. Because every time you run through and do an experiment, every time you analyze this genome, every time you synthesize this polymer, the world has changed. The temperature is different. The machine hasn't been calibrated. Your ingredients have been stored in, a, in the wrong fridge. So every time you go through and do something in the real physical world, the world has changed. And so that's the challenge that science-based companies have, is that there's no real easy way that you can turn back the time and debug a process that you've done in the physical world. So let me walk you through the steps you need to go from start to finish to make a product on a science-based company. First, basic research. Hey, I did it once. It works. Great. All right. Next. You go to development stage, which means we think we know how to take the basic research and turn it into something that should work multiple times. So that's the development stage. But finally, you need to go into manufacturing and production, actually make a product. Because what's the point of doing all this research if you can't make a product and bring it into the market? So on the production side of things, what you have is, hey, we can actually make this thing multiple times, millions of times, and it works every single time. Those are the steps that you need to go through to have a successful science-based company. Invent something, figure out how to make it, and then actually make it. So it sounds simple, but let's go with a very simple analogy. Try baking a cake. So I will bet you, if every one of us took the exact same recipe for chocolate cake, we went home and we come back tomorrow, we're all going to have hundreds of different cakes, even though we followed the same recipe, or even if we follow the same procedure and protocol. And the reason for that is my oven at 500, 400 degrees Fahrenheit might be different from your oven at 380. My 30 minutes in the oven might be 29 minutes, and your 30 minutes might be 32 minutes. So the minor variations are going to cause complexities. Now, with the, in the world of cakes, that's okay. Who cares? It's a cake. You can eat it. It's probably pretty good. Um, but the problem in pharmaceutical manufacturing, for example, those minor variations can cost you millions of dollars. So that's the complexity that happens when you work in material science and pharmaceutical and science-based companies. So the simple, the simple solution to all this is, wouldn't it be great if we could just measure everything. If we can measure everything, then we should be able to make sense of what's happening. So imagine putting temperature sensors everywhere and measuring everywhere inside your oven. You should be able to get a very, very good cake every single time. So that's the theory. But in practice, 
it's very expensive. So you know what? We're going to learn how to drive down the costs from the consumer world. And very simply, we already live in a very connected world. We live in smart homes. So many of us have smart light bulbs, we have、uh, smart alarms, we have smart security systems. So we have sensors in our homes. Now, what about transferring that same technology into the enterprise space? What about smart labs? And what about smart factories? We can take the same consumer grade technologies, which are very low cost, and repurpose them and move them into the enterprise space. And so we can move these into pharma companies, we can move these into biotech companies, into material science companies, and create smart labs and smart factories. So, this is how we're solving the problem of risk when it comes to science based companies. So, let me give you an example. Uh, just two very simple examples of how, this, how we put this into practice、um, in, in the lab. So, I'll take the oven analogy again. <clears throat> so, one of, the, one of the projects we did was we were working with a medical device company that was actually fabricating a polymer that gets implanted in the body. And they had tons of problems with getting that polymer to be fabricated the same way.、Um, And in the recipe to make this polymer, they had one step, which is hey, bake this polymer in the oven for two hours. And it turned out that that one step actually comprised seven small steps. So in this case, step number one is when you turn the oven on and you see the oven temperature go up. Step number two is when you open the oven door, the, oven, the temperature dips down a little bit. Step three is when the temperature of the polymer starts increasing. And you can see that there's seven distinct steps in baking a polymer. This is just like baking a cake, but there's seven simple, small micro steps. Each one of those has to be exactly timed for the polymer to come out. So it's just like baking a cake, but we're making medical devices. And so we put a system together that over hundreds and thousands of these runs, we were able to optimize the performance using nothing but connected wireless sensors and a little bit of machine learning on the back end to figure out what the optimal conditions were. So, this is a very simple example where we use consumer grade technology, but we put it into a high value situation. And by their own admission, we've saved them about three to four months of work because they were able to optimize this on the fly at a fraction of the cost. So, it's a simple example. Another one, we had another project where we worked with a, drug,、uh, a, a company that was making a drug delivery coating. And they couldn't figure out why their coatings weren't working. And these are high value products. These are, These are materials that go into the human body to release drugs on time, but they couldn't fabricate it correctly. Millions of dollars had gone into investment, but they couldn't get it to work right. And it turned out very, very simply, we put sensors everywhere in their lab. We had a bunch of sensors, and everything was being crunched. So anytime they fabricated this drug delivery system, we understood what was happening in, in the lab. Temperature is fluctuating. Light, sunlight was, was affecting it, humidity was affecting it. All of these small things you don't even think about. But when it comes to chemistry, these things matter. And it turned out that we were able to find a portion of a signal that was correlated with the quality of their product. So, in low humidity environments, they had a good polymer, and in high humidity environments, they had bad product. So, we were able to save about three to four months of their development time. Just by monitoring what was happening in their lab. So, the smart home is great, but the smart lab is valuable. This is how we accelerate products to market. So, do you look around and you ask what kind of companies are out there that are working on IoT for science? And I want to give you a couple of examples because this is happening and this is, this is a An application of,、uh, of connected sensors that doesn't get a lot of press because it happens behind the scenes. But you can break it down into companies like Emerald Cloud Labs and Viom, both in San Francisco, where you can classify them as robotic and digital labs. So、uh, think of these companies as AWS for science, where they have a big warehouses full of, of scientific equipment, all controlled by robots. And you can upload your protocols, and these robots carry out your work. So this drastically reduces the cost of running a, 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 a very expensive experiment. So, you, there's also other software companies that work on data, and work,、uh, data analytics and, and, and workflow, like、um, Benchling and Riffin. And these are companies that are out there that are saying, 
every time you want to bake a cake, here's the process that you need to follow. Here's every machine you need to touch, and here's how much time you need to spend between everything. So these, this is software for helping somebody go through, iterate, and come up with a process that actually produces a valuable output. So these are companies. Um, these companies are selling into customers that have raised hundreds of millions of dollars in order to bring medical products to the market. And if we can shave six months to a year off of their uh, time to market, that's tremendous value both for the investors, the company, and for the general public because the fact that we're bringing new products out there. And we kind of fit in in the middle. So my company, Elemental Machines, we actually provide sensors and analytics for both of these types of companies. So we, again, build products, wireless sensors, wireless temperature, light, humidity, motion, air pressure, you name it, oxygen, carbon dioxide, anything that's related to life sciences. We have wireless versions, and we can help make smart labs. And what's amazing about this world is these kinds of opportunities are, are popping up all the time. And as an example, this is a picture of uh, Emerald, Emerald Cloud Lab on down in uh, South San Francisco. They have an entire warehouse full of robotic systems. So what you do here is, if you want to run an experiment, if you want to do a gene sequence, if you want to synthesize some DNA, if you want to synthesize a new polymer or, or material, you upload the protocol, you send them the you FedEx the sample to them, and then the robots just take care of it. And everything is measured. Every single part of that process is measured. The temperature, humidity, the vibration of the machines, everything is quantified. And this is how we're going to revolutionize the next generation of medical and biotech products. Is it's through automation. It's through sensors. It's through machine learning that when you run something like this through hundreds and thousands and millions of times, there are patterns that start to emerge. And, we, and this is how we accelerate invention, and this is how we accelerate discovery of new, of new drugs, new products, and new molecules. The last company that I wanted to tell you about is this really cool company called Viome, also in the Bay Area. They, uh, they have a digital mouse lab. So what you may not realize is every single drug that is on the market today has to go through animal trials. And it always goes through mouse trials. Every single drug has been tested on a mouse. That's just the way it is. So these guys at Volume, they created a digital mouse lab. So they have basically mouse cages with tons of sensors in them. They track everything. They take terabytes of data where they know exactly how much they breathe, how fast they breathe, how much they run back and forth, when they drink, where, where they sleep. Every single thing is quantified. So for those of us who, who, who know the, uh, the quantified self-movement in digital health, this is the ultimate quantified self-movement. You're tracking terabytes of data for mice. And by doing that, you understand, does a drug work or does a drug not work? And are the, are the positive and negative outcomes really because of the drug or because of something, something silly? So many times, uh, these experiments fail because the cleaning staff comes in and cleans the mouse room at 2 in the morning, wakes up the mice, and guess what? Their sleep is disturbed. There have been so many, uh, I kid you not, I've, I've, I've had a friend who actually had to throw away six months of data because she had sleepy mice. And it's because there was construction happening after hours. And it was great for the scientists because no one was there, but the mice were, were kept awake all night for months. And you know what? Six months of research thrown away because the mice had no sleep. And you think about this. The cure for cancer could have been in there somewhere. And why do we not have a cure for cancer? It, should be, it shouldn't be for reasons like this. So that's why companies like Volume have realized that, wow, if you have this Internet of Things connected ecosystem, but focus it very specifically on high-value parts of the drug development process, you can actually make a difference. So finally, I'll leave you with the idea that, you know, what can we do with IoT labs? It may sound really crazy, because you think, you know, we have sensors in everything else. We have sensors in cars. We have sensors in our homes. We should have them in our labs, because you know what? This is how we're going to extend our life as human beings. If we're going to develop new drugs, new medicines, we need to invent things in a way that's sustainable, and we need to invent things fast. And we can't, we can't blame sleepy mice for not having the cure for cancer. So in conclusion, 
putting sensors and networking and machine learning into scientific processes means that we can actually thrive as a species. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for listening to me. And I think I am the last thing standing between you guys and beer and wine and parties tonight. So thank you all very much and have a good evening.